Just look at that. It is a thing of beauty. In fact, these all are. I have three brand spanking new laptops from ASUS. They're all coming very soon, including the VivoBook Pro 16X OLED, the ZenBook Pro 14 Duo OLED, and the ZenBook Pro 16X OLED. Although straight away, which one of these would you take home right now if you could just grab through the screen and pick one up? Which would you go for? Let me know in the comments. It's a tough one, considering they all have these refreshed designs. They get Intel's latest 12th gen H series CPUs, as well as the latest Nvidia GPUs. We get DDR5 RAM, PCI4 storage, better cooling, better quality webcam and speakers, upgraded IO, and as you can see, some absolutely gorgeous high refresh 16 by 10 OLED screens. In fact, one of these laptops well, it's this one, is actually nearly three times faster than the outgoing model, which is just insane for a year-on-year -year upgrade. So I've actually teamed up with ASUS for this video, who very kindly sent out these uh, review samples, also a pre-production model of this, which I'm very excited about, and I just want to show you around, see how they compare, and maybe which one is the right choice for you. Although I must admit, I do still get a little bit confused by ASUS's naming conventions. We have VivoBooks, which are the slightly more affordable, sort of good all-round laptops. Then just above that, we have VivoBook Pros, this guy, with a sort of higher-end specs, a bit more powerful, a bit more expensive as well. The sort of tier up from that are the ZenBooks, a little bit more classy, a little bit more sort of unique designs, often a bit more powerful, although as you will see, this is no slouch. And then above that, you have the ZenBook Pros, like this guy, and then at the top tier, in terms of the sort of creator laptops, we have the ProArt Studio Books, which I haven't got the refreshed version here yet. And then in parallel to all that, you've got the ROG gaming laptops. Anyway, all three laptops I've got here are geared more towards creators. They offer plenty of performance, color accurate screens, a good range of ports, and they're all squeezed into premium portable form factors. But let's kick off with this guy, the VivoBook Pro 16X OLED. And this review sample is actually the super duper high-end model with some pretty beefy specs, including the brand new i9-12900H and also the 3070Ti. No doubt this will also have a pretty beefy price tag as well, although I will update the description with final pricing and release dates for all these laptops. But the very first thing you will notice about this is this beautiful big 16-inch OLED screen. The question is though, would you rather have a 4K 60Hz screen like this or a 3.2K, so slightly lower res, but 120 hertz high refresh. You have both options with this. Personally, I would go high refresh, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Although neither of these are touchscreens though, bear that in mind. But I really do appreciate ASUS have gone full OLED and full 16 by 10 across most of their lineup this year. Having that extra bit of vertical screen space makes such a big difference. And going back to a regular 16 by nine screen just feels kind of confined. Now to avoid boring you all to death, the lovely people over at ASUS's marketing department have put together this one page little overview of the laptop and they clearly love a snazzy gradient color on the text. But this thing, as you can see, is ridiculously good. I'm just gonna leave this up here for a second so you can fully take in all the features you're getting with this VivoBook. So far so good then, but there are a few extra little features here that I think really make this stand out, including this, the ASUS dial, which you activate just by swiping in from the top right corner of the touchpad. We saw this on last year's model as well, and still, if I'm honest, I haven't found myself using it nearly as much as the proper physical ASUS dials that you get on the ZenBook Pro 16X and the ProArt Studio Books that give you that sort of tactile feedback so you don't have to keep looking down to make sure your finger hasn't moved off it. But A, you don't have to use it, and B, it can be a nice little extra way of controlling some basic window settings and also making adjustments within the Adobe suite. For now, they're pretty much the only apps that support the dial. Design-wise, I actually really like this. It's not too in-your-face or showy-offy. It would be a good work laptop as much as a creator or gaming laptop at home. Um, there's a few nice little flourishes as well, including the orange escape key. We've also got this little chevron design on the enter key, two-tone gray uh, keyboard, also this little orange rubber base at the bottom. And also, if you can ignore my smudges there, there's quite a unique little ASUS VivoBook logo on the back. I think the most shocking thing is that this webcam 
isn't terrible. In the past, they've been pretty ropey, but uh, it's in a good location on the top bezel. Uh, it also supports face unlocking. We've got an IR sensor, but we also do have that fingerprint reader built in the power button. Now, software is one of those things I don't really need to spend much time on when laptop reviews. It runs Windows 11. Uh, but what does stand out, uh, not only are the ProArt Creator Hub apps, which I'll show you in a second, but also this My Asus app. This is genuinely useful. Being able to switch between different screen color gamuts, so whether you want to look at P3 or Adobe RGB, you can also switch fan profiles to give you different levels of performance. And also, as you would expect to see on an OLED display, we also have plenty of OLED care options. Although one really cool feature I like is this target mode that actually dims background apps and non-active areas of the screen. The only slightly odd thing about this is that the backlight under the keyboard doesn't seem particularly even. I can definitely see that the O is a lot more illuminated than any other keys. Although I should say it is nice that we have a numpad here. And also, as you can see, the uh, matte texture on the body does pick up smudges and fingerprints quite easily. But aside from that, and also perhaps the fact that we have these uh, slightly protruding plastic bezels here and not the nice more flush, glossy bezels that you get on some of the higher end models. This is definitely worth considering if you want a mid to high end creator slash all round laptop. The design may not exactly wow you, but I think the performance and also the portability probably will. So that is the Viva book, but let's move on to this guy, which as you can see has the new Asus monogram little logo, which is definitely not a uh, Star Trek communicator badge. Or at least it doesn't work when you press it onto your chest like that. Anyway, it's the ZenBook 14 Pro Duo OLED. This did kind of make me laugh though. Apparently it is the world's first 14.5 inch 2.8K 120Hz OLED laptop with a second screen. I mean, I don't think there's a ton of competition in that particular category. To be fair though, it really is only ASUS with their ZenBooks and also their Zephyrus Duos on the ROG side that are giving us some good dual screen options. Others have tried, but I think these guys do it best. Although the crazy thing here is it's actually not the screens that are the big upgrade. So this tops out with an RTX 3050 Ti up from the MX450 on last year's model. So that's a massive upgrade for the GPU and that's paired with up to an i9-12900H. Altogether, we're looking at an 85 watt TDP for the laptop versus 140 watts on the Vivo book. So it's not quite as powerful, but it trades some of that raw performance for being a lot more portable. This is just 17.9 millimeters thick and it weighs just 1.7 kilograms. But as well as having that significantly more powerful GPU, we've also jumped from the four core i7-1195G last year to the 14 core i9-1200H processor. For the first time, this gets a proper 45 watt H series. So in Cinebench, we're looking at around a two and a half times uptick in multi-core performance, 250% year on year. Although if we do then bring in the results from Rainbow Six Siege and Tomb Raider and Time Spy, you can see the 3070 Ti in the Viva book is around 50% faster than the 3050 Ti in the ZenBook Duo. So even though I want to have words with Intel about their Intel 7 marketing for Alder Lake when the chips are still pretty much 10 nanometers, although it's a bit hybrid, there are clearly some big efficiency gains. And also together with improved airflow and better cooling throughout, almost smashed myself in the face there with it, they've managed to fit the beefier, higher wattage uh, chip in here, which is very impressive given just how small and thin it is. One thing I will say is that this does get quite loud. Also, you do really notice the difference in performance going between battery power mode and also having it plugged in. So I am going to revisit this and do more testing for my in-depth review and also see how that impacts battery life. But the crazy thing is we still haven't got to the coolest part of this, the dual screens. And up top, we have this 14.5 inch, 2.8K, 120 Hertz OLED screen. And then on the bottom, we have this 12.7 inch screen pad plus also 120 hertz, and both are touchscreens with ASUS pen support. So this is a much better option if you want to draw, sketch, and you know do pen stuff. The Screen Expert 3 software does feel pretty familiar if you've used one of these in the last couple of years, although the fact that both screens are now 120 hertz makes everything feel so much more responsive. It's also a little bit easier to see and actually use the screen pad thanks to this improved matte coating. They actually use microscopic glass etchings, which is similar to what Apple does with a nano texture on their Pro Display XDR, and that's combined with an anti-glare and an anti-reflective coating. 
They have put a lot of effort into making this screen pad more comfortable to use. I still find myself having to lean over a little bit to see, uh, and also you can notice the difference in the screen because obviously this is glossy, this is matte, so when you're dragging windows between them, there is a noticeable shift in both the color and, well, just how it looks on the screen. But certainly now that they've eliminated the sort of bottom bezel, the screen covers that, and particularly on a small laptop like this, the extra screen really does give you a lot more flexibility. Trust me, after you've tried this and you find your best sort of use case for it, going back to any other laptop is tough. I also appreciate ASUS have moved the DC power port and the micro SD, certainly no full size SD, along with the HDMI 2.1 on the back, so you can hide some of the cables out of the way. I've got to say, I feel a little bit sorry for anyone who bought the ZenBook Duo last year because this is such a monumental upgrade, not just in terms of a slightly refreshed design and improved screen pad, but the ridiculous amount of performance this thing offers in this form factor with the new 3050 Ti and the H series 12th gen CPUs. And I think for most people, it's the case that you look at it and think, yes, I need that. I know exactly how I'm going to use it. Or you think, probably wouldn't use it, in which case maybe stick with one of these other options. But even if it's not for you, holy moly, this is a whopper of an upgrade. But then what about this? Have I saved the best till last? This is the ZenBook Pro 16X OLED. And for my money, this is what's gonna properly take on the might of Apple's MacBook Pro 16. It is the most powerful ZenBook you can get, and actually it brings it much closer to the ProArt Studio Book, not least because we have this ASUS dial built in. It's kind of a halfway house between the VivoBook's virtual dial and also the full fat dial that we get on the Studio Books. But this has also been refined. It is 75% thinner. We get a new glass covering and it really is lovely to use. Although again, it's still pretty much limited to the Adobe suite. I love the fact that we get OLED screens on all of these actually. When you've got some good content, particularly HDR and you get those deep inky blacks, just look at it. You can eat your dinner off it. So this guy can be specced with up to an i9-12900H, an RTX 3060, although out of the three, this one does get slightly faster RAM, 5200 megahertz versus 4800. The only problem though, is that I actually can't test this just yet. This is a pre-production model, uh, which means I can't benchmark it. If I run any tests on this, then some ASUS goons are gonna barge through my door and take it off me. I had goons. I had goons. <laughs> But what I can tell you is that it's using a new 3D vapor chamber cooling system. Also, if I put it down here and then open it up, you can see the keyboard lifts up as well. So that actually has helped improve airflow altogether by up to 30%, ASUS tell me. And so with all that, they have still managed to cram in some pretty good specs. The whole TDP of the laptop is about 140 watts, while also making it just 16.9 mil Thick. And of course we are getting this 16 inch 4K Pantone certified display HDR 500. Beautiful screen, although it is only 60 Hertz, but it is a touch screen and it supports the ASUS Pen 2, which comes bundled in the box. You don't have to pay anything extra for that. Oh, look at that. That is a smart design. This actually is lit up. We have a sort of side lighting and this monogram ASUS logo lit up. Also the keyboard with a new white RGB, so WRGB backlight. Apparently white is the most popular color that people want, so they've added the W, but perhaps slightly more important than go fast RGB is this giant touch pad, which as you can see also doubles as a numpad, which is very nice. Uh, this actually is 84% bigger than the previous model, so a big whopper of a touch pad, and that sits beside the ASUS dial. We also get this new and improved webcam. It's 1080p, we get a much bigger sensor, and they also use some uh, noise reduction algorithms. And also there's a new quad mic setup. I'm actually recording the audio and the video through the webcam now, so let me know how it looks and sounds in the comments. And also like the others, we have face unlocking and a fingerprint reader in the power button. Not sure what's happened to my TV. So this is essentially a thinner, cheaper, more mainstream version of the ProArt Studio Books, which as I say, is also getting a 12th gen refresh. But I think for me, this is gonna be the one that's gonna tempt me perhaps away from the MacBook Pro 16. So that is just a taste of what's coming soon, but which would you go for? Have you changed your mind? Let me know in the comments. Stay tuned for my full reviews and also my ROG gaming laptop hands-on that's coming very soon. And I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.